uh, this, this isn't a, a corner reflector, unlike, unlike most re reflectors. Uh, it's, it's a different type called the Lunenberg lens, uh, generally used as a radar, a precise target for calibrating radar. Uh, and at $3,000, thereabouts, they're not widely fitted. There's, there's a, a quote that I've uh, misappropriated. The American company West Marine did a, a report into radar reflectors in 1995 and came up with the phrase, a, a radar reflectable suitable for a stealth bomber. The tube type reflector shown here is very commonly fitted on, on uh, yachts and other small vessels. Uh, and I would say it probably does more harm than good in leading a false sense of security. I fitted a radar reflector, therefore the people will see me think again. It fails a fundamental principle of radar reflectors, of the, of the corner reflector, trihedral reflector, and reflector, that for it to be effective, the side, the, 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 the length of the, 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 the dimensions of the, of the device should be larger, preferably several times larger than the wavelength of the radar in use. So what can be done about this issue? I believe that there is potential for an improved design of reflector. To some extent, this, this is trying to combat the laws of physics. You have to keep the, the device small enough to make it worth fitting without producing too much windage. But it, it would, I believe it would be feasible to design a better reflector that's capable of in, in increasing the radar cross-section of, of small craft. And this has got to be capable of overcoming the two key failings of existing reflectors. Firstly, that the performance tends to vary very widely with the azimuth of the target. And secondly, that the performance falls off rapidly as the angle of heel of the vessel increases. I also believe that the scope for improved installation standards of radar reflectors. I also think that perhaps an even bigger potential improvement would be material improvements to the design of small craft. In fishing vessels, I think it would be feasible to incorporate trihedrals into the design of the, of, of, of the vessel to make them more obvious radar targets. In the case of yachts, the class 5 yachts, I think it would be possible to incorporate uh, dipoles within the actual glass fiber, thus making a, a much larger surface area, a much larger uh, potential reflective area. This would be by incorporating uh, what, what I know as chaff, small metallic uh, reflectors within, within the design of the hull. And modern chaff is made out of aluminized glass fiber in most cases, and would, would uh, be a, an ideal, as far as I can see, part of, part of the construction process of, of these vessels. An idea uh, brought out by a New Zealand company a couple of years ago was the idea of an anti-collision rocket. Again, perhaps taking from military technology, the idea of a, a rocket that fires a parachute white flare and a chaff cloud to, to make it both a visible and a radar target, and warning of imminent collision. Other potential anti-collision techniques. We see now the, the increasing fit of AIS class B in small, small craft. AIS is undoubtedly valuable, but its value for this purpose is currently severely limited by the widespread use of the MKD rather than better type displays on vessels, and also by the non-use of the alarms. I think, I think class B AIS is perhaps being sold on the concept that if you fit this and get too close to a ship, then that will trigger an alarm and the ship will do something about it. Again, think again. The, the likelihood is that either the alarm will have been disabled due to the, the uh, over um, in, in use of the alarm, or alternatively, the, the, it will, the officer of the watch will go into auto cancel mode if he hears an alarm. Finished. I think the scope for improved lighting of small craft, we're now seeing the use of LEDs replacing filament lights <coughs> in their lights. And like with its navigation, this will, this will improve the uh, visual conspicuity of the vessel. In some areas, I know that strobe lights have been used to increase the, the conspicuity of small craft. And whilst this perhaps doesn't really fit in with the international rules, 
uh, I think that there would be benefit in fitting this as a sort of warning device, uh, not, not to be used permanently, but in, in the case of impending concern. Within the rules, of course, themselves, there's a the long-standing question as to how long does the stand-on vessel, particularly if there's a big size difference and speed difference between the two vessels, how long does the skipper of a small vessel stand, stand on, or at what stage does he choose to, to adopt Rule 17 and take his fate into his own hands. And the question of Rule 6, the safe speed. I mentioned earlier the, the uh, case study of the Wakuna. Uh, Wakuna was run down by a container vessel travelling in thick fog at 25 knots. Uh, does this really fit in with Rule 6? I don't think so. I think there is, with the advent of AIS now, I think there's scope for coastal administrations to monitor what shipping is actually doing in their waters. I think if, if they know that there is thick fog in a certain area, then they have a right to call the vessel up and ask whether they, the, the vessel master considers that 25 knots is safe speed in thick fog. Touching very briefly on, on uh, mitigation or post-collision actions, sounds very obvious, stop to render assistance. In almost all the cases that I mentioned earlier, the case studies, the larger vessel did not stop. And I, either through not being aware that an incident had occurred or, or by believing that it had not been a serious incident. Nowadays there is much more scope for emergency alerting. There's DSC radio, five, five second gap to, to, to put out an emergency distress. There's flint free e perps And there's devices such as the, the Guardian that's being promulgated towards the fishing industry now, uh, in, certainly in Britain. Uh, which is a satellite tracking device which tracks both the um, another system on, on board the, the small craft, the fishing vessel, and also daughter units actually that the crew actually carry. So it alerts both in the case of a man overboard or in the case of the vessel losing contact. Well, one area perhaps of concern is that the use of retro reflectors, um, SOLAS tape, is uh, used to. Uh, is promulgated as being, as being good for radar reflectivity. However, tests have shown this to be, uh, or tests have been slightly less than conclusive. Uh, and I fail to see how, how retro reflectors work particularly well because they fail that their the test they're significantly smaller than the wavelength of radar. Future radar developments. Uh, Nick touched on MT radars, new technology radars. We see that we're seeing, likely to see more, more of these being adopted. Low power radars, getting away from the magnetron, uh, and relying on improved signal processing for better clutter performance. Currently available at S band for solar vessels and X band for non solar vessels. But in the interest of, of detecting small vessels, small craft, or even boys in clutter conditions, I believe that reflectors will still be required. So, in conclusion, Existing passive radar reflectors do not offer the claimed increase in safety assumed by most users. There is scope for improved design of passive reflectors and for the incorporation of radar reflectivity within boat design. AIS, active reflectors, LED and strobe lighting and chaff rockets potentially all offer potential improvements to safety. I believe that collisions are likely to continue as long as Rule 6 continues to be floated. And I also believe that there are widespread adoption of automatic emergency reporting systems, such as the, the guarding system I mentioned, uh, offer definite possibility of saving lives. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. So, following examples of maritime systems, we have some solutions. I'm sure your questions are coming along nicely. Uh, the last speaker for this first session is Commodore David Squire, <coughs> Master Mariner, and um, following um, a long and successful career at the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, has remained active doing uh, many things for 
the Nautical Institute and the Voyage Disc and many other bodies. He's the editor of Alert. I don't know if you've seen it.